This is one of those, I really should have been using this sooner kind of scenarios. At some point, most of us will run into a situation where we become aware of some regression in the code base. Or to put it more eloquently, shit used to work, but it doesn't anymore. I've run into this situation many times, and the last resort option is to essentially just start a binary search on the git commit history. Go back some arbitrary amount of time in the git history, or make an educated guess as to where a sensible start might be. Check out that commit and see if the problem is still present. If it isn't, then check out the commit that is roughly halfway between the head of the branch and the commit that we now know to be good. We keep repeating this process until we find the commit that was responsible for the break, and then we can figure out what exactly happened. Git bisect is basically that, except it is automatic and more precise in selecting which commit to test next. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to be using lazy git because that's what I use for git, but it's also a great way to see visually what is happening with the bisect. But you can of course do this with your preferred tool or with plain git as well. So we don't know where specifically things broke, but let's say we know that this commit is good. We can start our bisect on this commit. In lazy git, I can do that by hitting B for bisect and then G to mark it as good. Then we can go all the way to the head of the branch and mark that as bad by hitting B and then B. Now the bisect will check out the commit that is halfway between the two that we just marked as being good and bad. We can check if the problem is present and mark this current commit as either bad or good. Once we have made this decision, the bisect can now ignore half of the commits and it will automatically check out the commit that is halfway between the remaining commits. We continue in this fashion, continuing to mark commits as good or bad as we split the potential commits to search in half each time, and soon enough we will have our culprit. Since this is a binary search, the set of possible commits for the culprit decreases exponentially. So even if we had to go 100 commits into the past, we would only need to check 7 commits to find the culprit. Now a lot of the time when addressing some bug, I like to add a test for the way the functionality should work, which then gives me an easy way to test if I have fixed the problem or not. Or in this case, it would give me an easy way to check if the problem is in a particular commit or not. So let's say I add a test for the bug that is present at the head of the branch, and now I start my bisect. The problem is that when the bisect checks out an older commit, that test is no longer going to be there, so I can't use it as a way to verify if the current commit is good or not. But I do have a little trick for this scenario where either you want to add a new test to verify the bisect or you have a test that already exists but it doesn't exist in older commits where you are running your bisect. Basically you can just make a copy of the test file you are interested in. I can literally just copy and paste the file and call it something like temporary.spec.ts or something like that. If you are adding a new test then you should add your new test to this copied file not the normal test file. This temporary file will be untracked in Git, and so when you are checking out older commits as part of your bisect, it isn't going to be overwritten. So then you can just keep this temporary test file in your working tree as you are running your bisect, and you'll be able to see your test running each time a commit is checked out, and you can mark each commit as good or bad based on the results of the test run. Once you are done, you either just delete the temporary test file, or if you are adding a new test, you can copy the test over into the main spec file and commit it, and then remove the temporary test file. This approach seems a bit hacky, but at least in my opinion, it beats the alternative of having to constantly stash and pop changes in Git. If you don't mind, a like or subscribe before you go would be very much appreciated, and I hope to see you back here again soon.